In the uncharted expanses of the galaxy, beyond the shimmering veil of the Nebulan Rift, lay the sprawling empire of the Zytherians, a race of beings whose understanding of cosmic forces had given them dominion over a thousand star systems. At the heart of this empire, on the throne of the Zytherian dominion, sat Empress Vara, a figure revered and feared in equal measure. Her eyes, luminescent and deep violet, mirrored the nebulae that birthed her civilization, her mind, a complex network of strategy and sentiment, worked tirelessly to safeguard her people. Empress Vara's reign was marked by peace and prosperity until the scouts brought news that chilled the very stars around which their planets orbited. The humans, a young and industrious race from the Sol system, had somehow amassed a fleet of over 9,000 super carriers. Such a number was beyond reason, beyond possibility, it was, by all accounts of Zytherian intelligence, an impossible feat for a species that had barely brushed the outer echelons of interstellar travel a few centuries ago. Over 9,000. General Zyron mused, his voice a mix of awe and disbelief, as he stood by Vara's side in the command center, a vast room lit by the soft glow of star maps and holographic displays. How could mere humans achieve such numbers, your majesty? Vara, draped in a cloak that flickered with a starlight weave, contemplated the holograms that danced in front of her, images of human supercarriers, each a behemoth of metal and might. We must understand this anomaly. Assemble a team, Zyron. We depart for the soul system at once. As the Zytherian cloaked vessel, shadow of intent, slid silently into the outer reaches of the soul system, the crew watched in disbelief. Earth, a blue jewel against the backdrop of space, was surrounded by the constant movement of vessels, a ballet of iron and fire. Empress Vara, alongside her top generals, observed from the shadows. The shadow of intent was equipped with the most advanced cloaking technology, making it invisible to all but the most sophisticated sensors, which the humans did not possess. They mine asteroids with such primitive tools, yet the yield. General Tkal, a hulking figure whose skin shimmered like onyx, pointed at the holographic display showing human mining operations in the asteroid belt. Vara watched as human ships, rugged and resilient, extracted resources from asteroids. Their technology is basic, yet effective. But where do the resources go? They track the shipments to Mars and the Moon, where factories sprawled like great metallic forests. The speed at which these factories produced supercarriers was staggering. A supercarrier in a month. We would need a year with our technology, murmured Admiral Vic, her eyes wide with a mix of respect and fear. Vara's gaze narrowed. Something is amiss. This rapid construction is not the product of human ingenuity alone. Days of observation turned into weeks. Empress Vara and her team watched every move, every transfer of materials. They noticed unusual patterns, shipments of a strange, luminescent material that did not match any known human resources. Your Majesty, look. Zyron pointed to a convoy leaving Earth's moon, heading towards a quiet sector of the system. They followed, cloaked and cautious. In the shadow of Jupiter's moon, Europa, they found the answer. A base, hidden in the icy crust of the moon, pulsed with alien technology. The Krylons. Vara hissed, the name tasting like poison on her tongue. The Krylons were an old enemy, thought defeated in the Nebula Wars centuries ago. Now, they were here, supplying the humans with technology and resources. Vara watched as Krylon engineers worked alongside humans, enhancing their factories, supplying them with advanced materials that allowed for the rapid construction of the fleet. We must act, your majesty, Zyron urged. If the humans and Krylons unite their forces, they could challenge the empire. Vara's eyes blazed with a cold fire. Prepare for engagement. We will not allow this alliance to threaten our dominion. The Zytherian fleet, a legion of ships that blazed like stars gone to war, arrived at Europa. The confrontation was swift, Zytherian technology was vastly superior. The icy crust of Europa cracked under the barrage of their cosmic weapons, exposing the Krylon base. 
Vara herself led the charge, her personal guard slicing through Krylon defenses like a scythe through wheat. Inside the base, she confronted the Krylon leader, a being whose appearance was a shifting mass of shadows and light. You dare to return and challenge us? Vara's voice was a thunderclap in the silent chambers of the base. The Krylon leader never responded, only shape shifted in a humanoid type form and began smiling at the Empress as if something was on the way. The battle raged on Europa, a moon that now bore the scars of conflict, its icy surface shattered, revealing the steely sinews of the Krylon base beneath. Empress Vara, with her violet eyes gleaming fiercely in the chaos, led her Zytherian warriors through the labyrinth of corridors. The walls, lined with a bioluminescent alloy only the Krylons could fabricate, pulsed with a life of their own. Her generals, Zyron and Tkal, fought with a ferocity matched only by the desperation of the Krylon defenders. Their energy blades cut through the enemy ranks, scattering sparks and alien blood across the frozen ground. Your Majesty, the Krylons are falling back. Zyron called out, his voice echoing through the icy halls. Vara paused, her intuition flaring. No, they are too organized in their retreat. This is a feint. They're drawing us deeper into the base. Admiral Vix, monitoring the battle from shadow of intent, chimed in over their comms. Empress, we've detected a massive energy buildup beneath the base's core. It looks like a diversion. Vara's mind raced. The Krylons were cunning, using their base as a trap to ensnare her forces. Zyron, Tkal, pull back. Regroup at the outer ring. Vix, prepare the fleet. This is not the main event, it's the prelude. As the Zytherians tactically withdrew, the ground beneath the base shuddered violently. A colossal explosion tore through the core sending shockwaves across Europa's fractured surface. Vara watched as the base imploded, a sinking feeling in her gut. They sacrificed their base. Why? Tkal wondered aloud, his voice a low growl. Vara turned to her generals, her face set in a grim line. To buy time. Admiral Vix, what is the status of the human fleet? Your Majesty, it's, it's moving. The entire fleet of supercarriers has left Mars and is now in formation near Saturn, Vix reported, her tone laced with disbelief. Vara's eyes widened. The Krylon base was a mere distraction. The real threat is the human fleet. They used this time to prepare for a counterattack. In the cold void near Saturn, the human fleet, over 9,000 supercarriers strong, shimmered against the backdrop of the gas giant's swirling storms. The sight was intimidating, each carrier bristling with weaponry enhanced by Krylon technology. General Zyron observed the human fleet from the command deck of the Shadow of Intent. They have numbers, but we have superior technology. Vara wasn't so sure. The Krylons have given them more than just numbers, they've shared technology that could bridge the gap between us. As the Zytherian fleet approached, the humans began their maneuver. It was not the disorganized scramble of a fledgling power, but the coordinated movements of a seasoned armada. Empress, the humans, they are using Krylon tactical formations. Admiral Vix exclaimed, analyzing the incoming data. Vara watched the display, her mind piecing together the unfolding strategy. They've been trained by the Krylons, integrated into their war doctrines. This alliance goes deeper than we anticipated. The first volleys of the battle were exchanged at extreme range, the darkness of space lit by the brilliant flashes of energy weapons and the slower, but devastating, kinetic projectiles of the human fleet. The Zytherians pressed forward, their advanced shields absorbing the brunt of the human attacks. However, as they closed the distance, it became evident that the humans were not just defending. They were holding the Zytherians at bay while smaller squadrons flanked around the Zytherian lines, using the bulk of Saturn's moons as cover. Empress, they are attempting to encircle us. Tkal shouted, pointing to the tactical overlay that now showed human squadrons emerging from behind the moons. 
Vara clenched her fists. Admiral Vix, order the fleet to tighten formation. We can't let them envelop us. As the battle intensified, Vara realized the humans were not the simple miners and builders she had first thought. They were warriors, honed by necessity and now guided by the cunning of the Krylons. The Zytherians managed to push back the initial human advance, but at a cost. Their ships were not invulnerable, and human ingenuity had found ways to exploit weaknesses Vara hadn't known existed. Your Majesty, there's a communication coming in from the human fleet, Vix reported, her voice tinged with surprise. On screen, Vara commanded. The view shifted to show a human, clad in a uniform that was a fusion of military tradition and high-tech armor, his features were stern, with the hard-set jaw and piercing eyes of someone who had faced the void and commanded its respect. Empress Vara of the Zytherian Empire, he began, his voice carrying the weight of command and a surprising hint of respect. I am Admiral Lucas Wren of the Terran Space Fleet. Vara studied him, noting the subtle confidence in his stance. Admiral Wren, you lead your forces into a conflict with an empire that has reigned for millennia. Why? Wren's gaze didn't waver. Empress, we seek not conflict but the security of our species. The Krylons offered knowledge and aid in our defense, in return for sanctuary. We were not the aggressors, but we will defend our home. Vara was taken aback. The humans had been manipulated, yet their stance was not of subservience but of equal footing with the Krylons. And you trust the Krylons? After they were defeated in the Nebula Wars, their deceit and hunger for power were well documented. Ren smiled thinly. In the dance of galactic politics, today's enemy can be tomorrow's ally. We've learned much from the Krylons, but we are not their puppets. This fleet, he gestured to the supercarriers behind him, is humanity's will made to come into manifestation. Vara realized then that the humans had played a deeper game. They had used the Krylons as much as the Krylons had used them, a mutual exploitation for survival and strength. Admiral, your fleet is impressive, but do you understand the fire you are playing with? Vara's tone softened slightly, a mix of admiration and caution in her voice. We understand more than you know, Empress. We have seen the devastation left in the wake of your empire's expansion. We chose to prepare, to ensure our freedom, Ren responded, his voice firm. Vara nodded slowly. It seems we underestimated the humans. Your preparation is commendable. But know this, the Zytherian Empire does not seek the destruction of those who wish to coexist peacefully. Then perhaps it is time to discuss terms, Empress, Ren suggested. Terms that respect our sovereignties and ensure peace. Vara considered his words. A war with the humans, supported by Krylon technology and tactics, could be costly and unnecessary. I propose a ceasefire, Admiral a chance to parley and seek a lasting peace. Ren agreed, and the communication ended with a mutual nod, the first step toward a potential reconciliation. As the Zytherian fleet pulled back, Vara convened with her generals and admirals in the war room. The atmosphere was one of restrained frustration mixed with newfound respect for the humans. Empress, this could be a turning point. The humans have shown they possess not only the numbers but the cunning to be formidable allies or foes, Zyron said, analyzing the battle data. Tkal grunted, his demeanor showing his preference for straightforward battle over diplomacy. We could crush them with a full assault. But at what cost, Tkal? And what would we gain? Vara countered. We have a chance to bring stability and expand our influence through diplomacy rather than destruction. Admiral Vix was pragmatic. The humans have adapted quickly. Their production capabilities, enhanced by Krylon technology, could make prolonged conflict, challenging. Vara looked at the star map, her mind racing with possibilities. We will meet with the humans and Krylons. We need to understand their intentions fully and explore the paths of peace. Prepare the delegation. The diplomatic meeting was arranged on neutral ground, 
on one of Saturn's uninhabited moons, Titan. The atmosphere was tense as both delegations approached the temporary summit base, a dome structure designed for such parleys. Vara stepped into the negotiation room, her royal regalia replaced by the ceremonial armor of her people, symbolizing both strength and openness. Across from her, Admiral Wren and a Krylon representative, a shimmering figure named Silen, waited. Empress Vara, welcome, Wren greeted, his voice respectful. Silen, Vara nodded curtly at the Krylon, who responded with a slight bow. Empress, we propose an alliance, Wren started, laying out a star map with zones of influence and proposed trade routes. Humans and Zytherians could both benefit immensely. And the Krylons? Vara asked, eyeing Silen. We seek sanctuary in a place in this galaxy, Silen responded, his voice a melodic chime. We have changed from our warlike ways and wish to coexist. Vara listened, skeptical but intrigued. The discussions continued, with terms of technology sharing. As the negotiations unfolded on Titan, beneath the swirling orange mists of its thick atmosphere, Empress Vara's mind was not on treaties or alliances. Her thoughts were years away, on the ruins of Zythea, her homeworld, which had suffered under the Krylon assault eons ago. The memories of smoldering Zytherian cities and the cries of the innocent still haunted her dreams. Here, in this summit, she saw a chance not just for peace, but for retribution. Admiral Wren was mid-sentence, elaborating on a point about mutual defense zones, when Vara's patience snapped. Her hand moved to a device at her belt, something she had brought against the council of her advisors. It was an ancient Zytherian artifact, small and unassuming in appearance, but imbued with a devastating power designed for one purpose, to end the Krylon threat forever. Silence. Vara's voice boomed, amplified by the acoustics of the dome, cutting Ren off abruptly. All eyes turned to her, but her gaze was fixed on Silen, the Krylon representative. Silen, sensing a shift in the atmosphere, took a step back, his form shimmering with a mix of confusion and fear. Empress Vara, what is the meaning of this? Vara held up the device, and it glowed with a pulsating light. This, she said, her voice trembling with a mix of fury and sorrow, is the end light. A device created from the heart of a collapsed star, designed by my ancestors for one purpose, to extinguish the Krylon presence in our galaxy. The room fell into a stunned silence. The human delegation looked on, unsure of how to react to this dramatic turn. Ren's face showed a mix of shock and a dawning understanding of the depth of Zytherian despair and anger. Silen, now visibly panicking, tried to reason with her. Empress, we have changed. The wars of old are behind us. We seek only peace and coexistence. Vara's laugh was cold and hollow. Peace? After what you did to Zythea? You decimated our cities, corrupted our lands, and nearly broke our spirit. This is not just for peace. This is for Zythea. With a swift motion, Vara activated the end light. A beam of searing light shot from the device, enveloping Silen. The Krylon representative let out a brief, melodic scream before disintegrating into a cloud of dust that sparkled momentarily before fading into nothingness. The human delegation recoiled, horror-struck by the swift execution. Admiral Wren stood, his expression hardening as he faced Vara, who now turned her intense gaze upon the humans. Now, Admiral Wren, let us discuss the real terms of our alliance, Vara said, her voice dripping with disdain. You have seen what we are capable of. You have seen the fate of those who cross us. So, will you join us, or do you wish to share the Krylon's fate? Ren, his demeanor shifting from diplomatic to defensive, nodded slowly. Empress Vara, we, we will agree to your terms, he said, his voice barely above a whisper. Vara smiled, a cold, calculating smile. Good. However, know this, your fleet will now operate under Zytherian command. Your resources, your space, will be ours to command. This is not an alliance, 
Admiral. This is your civilization choosing servitude over extinction. The human delegation, faced with the raw display of power and the annihilation of the Krylon representative, had little choice but to agree. The terms were quickly drawn up, under which Earth and its colonies would become vassals of the Zytherian Empire. The once proud human fleet, over 9,000 supercarriers strong, was now just another arm of Vara's sprawling interstellar force. As Vara left the negotiation table, her cloak billowing behind her, she felt a mixture of triumph and a bitter, hollow victory. She had avenged her homeworld, but at the cost of becoming the very monster she had fought against for so long. The summit on Titan ended not with the handshake of equals, but with the bowed heads of those who had chosen the yoke of oppression over the fires of war. The Zytherian Empire had grown, not just in territory, but in the shadows that now stretched across Empress Vara's heart. And as the Zytherian ships departed, leaving behind a subdued and silent human delegation, the stars above seemed to dim, as if mourning the loss of what could have been a new era of peace and cooperation. Instead, the galaxy had taken a step deeper into the cycle of domination and revenge, a cycle that Empress Vara had once vowed to end. Her change of heart was easy shifted upon seeing her old enemy. The humans now under another enslavement, wondered where it had all gone wrong, the sentiment stirred in the population, maybe one day a real rescuer will set them free, for now they have to stock the fires of the factories once more.